of words speakers to come to the podium, please, and we will have 10 minutes now for interactive discussion. And as you may have realized that these uh, four uh, presentations are not really typical examples of water quality uh, issues that we face every day. It's very there's uh, special situations. One, how water quality is important in small and developing states. And the next issue is how water quality is important for not only for homes uh, to have drinking water for household users, but also for in schools, in campuses, in the rural areas, as well as in a country where the, uh, there is a need to uh, implement interventions in all aspects of water resource management in order to ensure that uh, water uh, access to safe drinking water is ensured for the entire population. So um, I will take the uh, first round of three questions. You may address uh, questions of uh, uh, Monsieur Subishmaki. So we will have the first round of three questions. You may address questions to any of the speakers. Please keep short your questions and we will have microphones for the speakers in the body. Okay, thank you very much. So raise your hand. So please. Uh, thank you very much, and I would like to congratulate all the speakers for nice presentations. But I just want to ask question. Yeah. yeah, I just I just wanted to ask one question, Hans, first before we continue to this. Is it possible that I ask Hans one question before we continue with this one? Uh, one just one quick one. Hans, please come to join us here. Thank for you, but uh, we will really make sure that the question is short and answer sure. is short. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you may formulate your questions while Hans is coming to the um, podium. I think you will be listening to us. Hans, you said that the form of nitrogen has the bearing on the eutrophication. Uh, nowadays, people are using um, fertilizer from ecological sanitation. Here, oh, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, nowadays, people are using fertilizer from ecological sanitation, which is different form of fertilizer from chemical non fertilizer What is your assessment? What is your only assessment on the eutrophication resulting from ecological sanitation? That's one. And then I have got I've to one question. So next speaker. Yes please uh, should I start? My question is uh, to Professor Ian White uh, uh, is there any evidences of the uh, relationship between the groundwater extraction and the uh, seawater intrusion in these uh, small island from the floor. Yes, uh, Professor Yaya. problematic link with using urea fertilizers as opposed to nitrate. 
But, you know, the bottom line is that all nitrogen fertilizers uh, have a fertilizing impact on lakes. So, uh, we're trying to figure out this link with harmful algal blooms, and it seems like urea is a particularly problematic uh, form of nitrogen. Uh, Jan, yes. there's a question about small animals in developing yeah, states. There is very good evidence to show that uh, excessive extraction causes uh, saline intrusion into the lens. And it's a classic example of uh, looking at the interaction between uh, regulation and technology. Uh, in the past, small island uh, uh, people basically bailed water out of, out of wells with a bucket. Uh, and so they really couldn't extract enough to, to, to salinize the lens. Uh, now that we have uh, electric pumps, diesel pumps, uh, one person can drain the entire island dry. Uh, and the regulation doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, stop it because of the uh, tradition that landowners also own the water under their feet. So one person can drain the entire community's water dry just by pumping. So it's a really interesting interaction between regulation, between technology, and what, what was the past. Dr. Noah, about the water quality issues, the risks of the contamination in the campus. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yaya, also for your question. At the end of that research study, we sent our comment and recommendation to the staff of the university. So, they require uh, a budget from the government for the settlement of a system of water treatment, but right now there is uh, any action <laughs> that maybe uh, due to the budget that the university cannot find uh, itself. You know. We have a question for one more time for one more question. Yes, please uh, over there in the back. Yeah, please keep your question short. Please. Uh, may I ask uh, Professor Ian White? Uh, this is regarding the uh, pathogen analysis. Uh, what sort of pathogens that uh, you analyze and uh, you say you have some problem? What are the problems? Uh, there's a huge range of pathogens because, I mean, some of these countries, uh, no, almost nobody has access to improved sanitation. In other ones, in the high uh, urban areas, only one third of the people have sanitation. So it, it's uh, pa sanit the, the pathogens are basically from human excrement uh, that, that contaminate. So a huge range of pathogens. Uh, in general, we, we use a very simple E. coli test to, to look at them, but you know there are a whole range of other things as well which we really should be testing for. I think, uh, Professor, you had a question, so I think we will uh, take your question. Yeah, please keep it short. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question about how much about the, how about the effect of this uh, loading of chemicals that I I also talked or other chemical pollutants or nitrogen anything about on the animal life of the water. To whom are you addressing your question? Whom are you addressing? Uh, any, question? any. Okay. Any of our speakers would like to ask answer this question about the loading of chemicals, uh, the fertilizers. Yes, yeah, please. Short. Uh, uh, Hans, please keep short. Yeah, just a quick answer to that is that uh, and there may not be a direct effect on animals, but there certainly is an indirect effect, particularly if you have uh, algal blooms that end up uh, causing low oxygen problems in the bottom waters, which will affect the habitat capabilities of the system. And of course, you have the hypoxia problem with uh, fish kills and uh, benthic uh, uh, animals. I don't think there's much evidence that high nitrate or high uh, phosphate loading directly affects animals uh, in the sense that uh, you know they're not the levels are usually low enough so that there's not direct toxicity. The only exception is high ammonia levels, uh, which could affect fish. But in most systems, the ammonia levels are not high enough to uh, have a direct effect. It's an indirect effect through the algal blooms and then affecting the low oxygen condition. Thank you. In fact, I'm, I'm talking about ask him. Please continue your discussion. Sorry for being interrupting you after doing the coffee break, after lunch. 
I think we have had very rich, interesting session. They were presenting very particular cases, small island development states, school campus, importance of water in school campus, rural areas, in a very different, different socioeconomic situation. But I think there was one thing in common, is that the access to improved water sources cannot guarantee safe water uh, for everyone. And so in the post-2015 sustainable development goals, we have to go beyond to provide access to really safe drinking water for everyone, even in schools. So thank you very much. We have been on time.